When we think of urban planning, we think of planning as the idea of where and how we grow. Think about Babylon, the walled capital city of Mesopotamia, and the cradle of civilization between the Tigris and Euphrates River. We can think of the Uruk, who as early as 2900 BC had planned settlements. During the Greek and Roman times, cities were also planned. Just think about it. The Roman Empire was able to provide road networks, water aqueducts, to serve their cities. Tenochtitlan is another example of the Aztec Empire, which is now modern-day Mexico City. Modern-day planning really takes off, however, to around the time of the Industrial Revolution in the 19th century. While economic activity was up, the Industrial Revolution led to poor city conditions such as poor air quality, raw sewage, smells, and unsanitary conditions deemed poor for human health. As soon as awareness picks up and the need to resolve the city conditions becomes more ideal, this leads to cities establishing ordinances such as zoning and codes in order to better conditions. Some of the earliest zoning ordinances is for example the 1916 New York Zoning Act. This act was meant to restrict building heights and improve residential tenements at the time. This was also done in part to protect existing neighborhoods from speculation and most important, improve living conditions motivated by health. The Euclid decision in the mid-1920s also brought the rationale about zoning. From the Euclidean zoning was the idea that the zoning determines the following. The division of land, equal treatment, land uses, and intensity development. Moving along, design solutions were also some of the early modern forms of planning that gained momentum. The two most prominent movements were the City Beautiful Movement and the Garden City Movement. The City Beautiful Movement was based on the idea of fixing the city. The Garden City was the idea of abandoning the city into newer housing areas, away from the city. Furthermore, the National Housing Act of 1934 was one of the first pieces of legislation that aimed at improving and regulating housing conditions, making housing more accessible and affordable including assistance on mortgages during the Great Depression. We also saw this bring the ideas of slum clearance in order to fund certain urban renewal projects and increased public housing. A notorious example of this concept of urban renewal in the 1930s and 40s was pruitt Igo. This was always an example in every planning course that I took when I was in college. The intention of this community was an urban renewal housing project to provide affordable housing. However, this community failed. Why it failed is another topic of discussion for another day. But it is an example of how planning can sometimes cause greater harm than good. During this time period as well, we saw the spread of Le Cubusier's grand idea of the Radiant City. While it never went into fruition, you could think of the Radiant City as a master planned city focused on the idea of a utopia-based society around an orderly living environment. Levittown is another example of the modern-day suburbia. After World War II, mass-produced homes outside the city became the symbol of the American dream. The prosperity that embedded the U.S. after World War II would lead to the mass suburbanization of cities. This was made possible due to increased economic activity seen after the war the development of infrastructure, especially freeways, and mass scaling home building. Suburbs were also seen as a solution to the city. As increases in urbanization occurred, the consequences from sprawl became more evident, even more so now in the modern day. Now, we are viewing the cities as a solution to the suburbs. Planning today revolves more around design, general plans, and master plans. This is outlined as zoning and subdivision ordinance, which in retrospect allows us to regulate the issues once planning had, such as land use, health, and safety.